Jujutsu Kaisen Chapter 235 review. And if you like JJK and other anime content, subscribe for more. The full translations for this chapter give a lot more detail on how Gojo pulled a Hall of Purple on Sukuna, so let's get right into it. So we open up with Jujutsu Jesus, or Gojo for the uninitiated, having just annihilated Chimera Beast Ajito, and the narration tells us that a second Black Flash was landed. And this has given Gojo a rush, or put him in the zone as Nanami referred to it. And just on the note of Black Flash, some people were confused as chapters to how Gojo's output of RCT was increasing again. Once you're in the zone, your chances of hitting a consecutive Black Flash go up because your precision with Cursed Energy is increased. And while a Black Flash is obviously stronger than a normal punch, it's also a mental amp. And I'm going to sprinkle this with headcanon in that, in my interpretation, it made sense to me that his reversal output should increase somewhat as well if he's able to use Curse Energy more efficiently in general right now. So that's how I gathered him being able to heal super easily this chapter, even outside of the incantations used for red. And following this, and Sukuna being noted as being nervous for the first time in a thousand years, we see Gojo land another Black Flash on Maharaga and enter combat with Ryoman Sukuna in melee. Knocking him through the window, Maharaga jumping in front of Sukuna to cover him from the Black Flash, and my god, Maharaga's durability really is something else. Even if Gojo's blue is adapted to, him tanking a Black Flash, Gojo's reinforcement is no joke on its own. That's a pretty impressive feat. We then see Gojo begin to use the incantations to bring back his red's output all the way. We then get a pretty interesting line from Sukuna here about a spark or the swelling up of cursed energy before a user utilizes a massive technique. And we always knew that something like this existed because characters like Toto and even Haruda always took note before they were about to get balonied. And a talented sorcerer like Sukuna is able to tell that this is a red reversal just based on the use of cursed energy and the incantations. And incantations in general, we've seen them before, but not like this. And this is really the fight that we get these Buddhist elements of incantations because words like Paramita, these are from Buddhism. And while I haven't dug too deep as to what the other words mean, I'm sure they are also references to either Hinduism or or Buddhism. And that's an interesting part about Jujutsu in general, is that it's not just this mathematical power system, it is kind of eldritch. There are very strict rules on Curse Energy, but there are also supernatural elements behind these rules, and I think that's really interesting. So we see Gojo shoot the Red Reversal not at Sakuna, but upwards, and Sakuna immediately realizes, oh shit, he's about to hollow a purple. Ordering Maharaga to prevent the two from merging, Maharaga goes out, first going for blue, because Red comes to a standstill before death. Detonating. And the max output blue is still perpetuated above the battlefield, and this is pretty clever on Gojo's part in that he's getting a two for one -er. But because Maharaga is adapted to blue, Gojo is able to pull himself with blue because blue's attraction is indiscriminate. Maharaga feels none of the attraction, and Gojo pulls himself right in between him and the orb and cuts him off. Because uncharacteristically of Sukuna, due to the Gojo factor, he panicked, and instead of sending Maharaga to stop the Red Reversal first, he merely ordered it to prevent the two from merging. And Maharaga being a Shikigami, it just went for what it thought was best, which was destroying the thing it was adapted to. I like the fact that in this fight we get to see that both Gojo and Sukuna, they are humans, and yes, Sukuna is a human. He may be closer to a Kara spirit like Tengen, but he's not the real deal. And because he's panicked, he gives it a more general order, and it doesn't go for Red. Since we know right now, Red Reversal alone is not enough to kill Maharaga, Gojo says all he has left is Holotechnique purple after trying to use a red, and Sukuna knows it's going to be able to handle the full output. So the result of all of this is Sukuna spilled the milk, and he attempts to use Piercing Blood to spur on the red explosion before it's able to reach the blue, but Gojo uses an incantation and reactivates the blue orb, pulling the Piercing Blood and nullifying it. And I have to say, this utilization of Limitless and the different applications and the different way he's playing in with incantations using his blue attraction this is cool. This is the kind of stuff I always want to see from Gojo's Limitless because his technique really does have some incredible interactions. And we see Yuta, after this, sit back down, realizing his mistake, thinking he was going to get his honored one moment. I'm sorry, Yuta, you want an honored one moment? You ain't going out in the Gojo vs. Sakuna fight, alright, Chief? Gojo collides the blue and red, creating the imaginary mass and lighting up the sky with a purple sun. We see the Maharaga get caught in it completely along with Sakuna and Gojo, and the wheel is dusted. Along with a major part of the city, as Sakuna walks out looking trashed, the Gojo saying the purple even hit him, but there is a damage difference due to it being his own cursed energy. 
Kusakabe looks at the wreckage, saying that Sakuna is without domain amplification and an inability to use Maharaga or do a lick of damage, and that this means Gojo should win. And I say it every week, but I do think that these chapters and their pacing, especially like the last five, have been the best in the whole fight. And are we moving into round three of this fight? Probably. Sakuna still has a hidden CT, whatever Yorzu gave him, or Kenjaku might pop out. Those are the three options I see as the most likely. We are told last chapter that Gojo's win con is different from Sakuna's, and Sakuna has been forced to hold back in preparation for fighting his students the whole time. We're told he has some kind of trump card, whether or not he's used it already, no characters have made comments on it. It sounds like there is some bullshittery going on, and things are going a little too well. If he was a giant dusty meat corpse, yeah sure, but now they're in the giant anime pit, and the giant anime pit is where all battles end. As for Maharaga, a lot of people are saying that this thing is going to totality and come back. I think it's done for this fight. I do think it's going to have a totality, and that will probably be saved for Megami, because they have put a lot of effort into saving Megami. Him just dying here, I don't see that as likely. Gojo is pretty free to go all out and save Megami, because if Sakuna is tanking two purples this fight, Gojo can punch him as hard as he wants. And I'll be honest, I don't know how I feel about purple in this fight. I feel like it got a hard nerf from what we previously saw. I know Sakuna is the most durable character we've ever seen in JJK, beyond like maybe the Shikigami. But something just doesn't hit right for me about Sakuna just sitting in a hollow purple, no domain amplification, and just eats it. Coming out the other side, looking pretty toasty, but suspiciously alive. And now that at the very least we're at the end of the Ten Shadows portion of this fight, I think we can all agree that Maguna is inferior to Yuji Sakuna. At least when it comes to looks, because Sakuna before, he looked like a chief, and now he looks like this punk. You like this mug better? Yeah, well, you're wrong, Sakuna. Put your hatred agenda for Yuji aside, Sakuna, and realize that you looked way cooler in him than this guy. Pack him up and put him back in Yuji, please. There's something about Sakuna using a Pokemon technique for the majority of this fight that felt like, you know, you're pretty much being carried by your Pokemon, where you're the Pokemon trainer, and yeah, it's a fighting style, but Shikigami users inherently feel like pussies. I guess you could say the same thing about Yuta, but Yuta has a katana, and katanas inherently increase your edge factor, both figuratively and literally, so maybe if Sakuna had a katana. There's something inherently comedic about a giant Shikigami putting his hand over Sakuna, like, don't worry, I will protect you from all the mean things they are saying about you. Normally I hold judgment until the very end of a fight, but even if the forearm demon Sakuna comes out, well, Maguna was still pretty lame. This guy could be the greatest Himothy Timothy of all time, but nothing is going to make Ten Shadow Sakuna not look like a punk. It's because of the Pokemon technique. If he only used cool Pokemon and just like went straight to Charizard and didn't decide to use Squirtle, things would have been a little bit different because Maharaga is cool. Chimera Beast Ajito literally laps fodder. But that's just my opinion, and I want to hear yours. Where do you think the fight is going next? Do you think Sakuna is donezo, or do you think there's going to be a Kenjaku intervention, or a Sakuna CT intervention? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like content like this, subscribe for more. And as always, thanks for watching.